So what is melanoides? Why should we study them? And then I'll go through materials and methods, so DNA extraction, and then this, um, this three rad process and how it works. And we'll talk about dispersal rates and what we're expecting. And then I'll talk a little bit about trematodes. So to start out, how do melanoides move? So they're an invasive species, and um, they're resistant to drying. They can tolerate high salinity, and uh, they can tolerate a high temperature range as well, as well as pH range. And the reason they're able to be so invasive is because um, they're, for one, they're parthenogenic, which means that the females can brood um, snails in their brood pouches, up to 60 snails, and then they live bear those snails, and then those snails can go on and produce more snails and they don't even need a male to reproduce. They just reproduce parthenogenically. And so when these snails get introduced because of the uh, aquarium industry, then they can reproduce with just the introduction of one gravid female. And so not only do these snails provide, like, um, invade and reproduce exponentially, but they can be uh, found in densities higher than 1,000 per square meter which is really, really dense. Uh, and they also harbor parasites. Uh, so not only do they hurt the native species of snail by outcompeting them, uh, but they also uh, have parasites in them. And so here you can see, um, some of the, maybe you guys can't see it very well, but the native region uh, is in Malaysia and some parts of Africa. Uh, and all of these red dots are areas where the snail has been found. And so, starting with materials and methods for this project, um, Dr. TJ and um, Dr. Chadwick from uh, London went to Florida in 2016 and collected 90 snails throughout Florida. Uh, and all of those preserved snails were sent to Center College, where I was working as a technician. So I working on this project and um, got really interested in doing the next generation sequencing and seeing how melanomies dispersed. And so that's where I came into the picture. So for my thesis, what I'm looking at uh, is doing the genetic data for this. So we've got uh, 90 snails that were preserved from Dr. TJ. And what we did first is we dissected their heads. Okay, so we've got preserved snails, we cut their heads off, and we did DNA extraction on those. And from that raw DNA, we used um, the restriction enzyme or restriction site associated DNA to analyze uh, the melanoides because using traditional molecular techniques has been found to not be uh, very reliable. So what is 3RAD and how does it work? So we start out with this uh, whole genomic DNA that we extracted from the snail heads. And we use uh, various restriction enzymes to cut the DNA at restriction sites randomly. And we get a good spread of the DNA that way. Then, um, after we finish that digestion, we add these uh, alumina sequencer adapters so that they can be sequenced, and we add a unique molecular ID, uh, and then we end up with DNA fragments of varying lengths based on the cuts. And then we sort those, and we select for 500 base pair uh, size sequences, and then uh, we use a technique 
um, to analyze the single nucleotide polymorphisms or SNPs in the DNA. And so what we're expected to learn from this is the dispersal. So what we're expecting, uh, or a first alternative, is a random dispersal caused by Aquarius and how they introduce them. So a lot of these snails, they come over uh, in contaminated plants or bags that we import for our aquariums, aquariums. And then when they grow exponentially in an aquarium, uh, a lot of people, they don't want to kill them. You know, they, they feel bad for them or something. And they take them, and they think, oh, well, I'll just put them in a pond, right? Because that's where they go. So they release them into these ponds, and then they grow again. Um, so what we're kind of expecting is to see a random distribution of snails going from one place to another, uh, rather than a, a directional dispersal, which we would expect if they were to be able to move through water canals or um, flooding events, etc. Um, so this is really what we're expecting, um, because we know that people release these snails, and we know that there's a huge aquarium industry, and you know different aquarium animals get moved from place to place um, just through the trucks and pet stores and whatnot. So our next steps are composing the libraries of, these, of the DNA. And so we get about uh, one million reads per specimen. So it's just in a, a huge amount of data to, to move through. And since I've only been working on this project for like two months, um, we haven't gotten to that point yet. We're still waiting to send for sequencing and whatnot. Um, and so we have to an analyze these sequences, look for the SNPs, and then use computer programs to determine the dispersal. And so another thing that's really important is that, like I talked about earlier, they can carry parasites. So why is this important? Well, melanotis have been known to carry parasites that infect humans. Uh, and one of them is a, a lung fluke, and the other is a liver fluke. Uh, and we haven't found these two particular parasites in our snails, but we have found four other snails, or four other parasites. And so these are four parasites that we have found. So there's, um, I know the pictures are a little gross, but there's a mammalian intestinal parasite that we <coughs> contract, um, a gill fluke that bloodies the gills of fish, uh, an eye fluke that infects birds, um, and a muscle fluke. And, um, Uh, so, I don't know how well you guys can see this, but here's a human, and uh, here are the eggs expelled in feces. And then the snail is an intermediate host to nearly all of these um, parasites. So that's why it's important to study these snails, because their spread also spreads the trematode parasites. And so, in summary, we're using a molecular technique to understand the dispersal of melanoides and their parasites, uh, but we still have a lot of work to do on the analysis of this genetic data. And uh, we found new parasites in the genetics in Florida. Um, so it's the first time that these parasites have been found in Florida. And I'd like to thank um, Dr. Tully Jordan, Dr. Wooten, Dr. Chadwick, uh, Courtney Timmons, and um, the NFS grant for this work.